Here are two of the best creator laptops you can buy. On this side, we have the Apple M3 Max on the MacBook Pro 16 inch model. And on this side, we have the Asus ProArt StudioBook 2023 model. Both of these are 16 inch laptops and also one of my favorite laptops. Which one is better? Which one should you buy? Because one of these is half of the price of the other one. Let's go. This video is not sponsored by anybody, but if you do want to pick up any of the things we're talking about in this video, I'm going to leave the link in the description below, as well as the Tech Notice merch. If you want to pick up some hats, hoodies, t-shirts, you don't have to, but I'm going to leave the link in the description below if you do want to check them out. Back to the video. First of all, the price. This Windows laptop here, you can pick up less than two and a half thousand dollars. This Apple MacBook Pro M3 Max chip you're gonna have to cash out $4,000. I wanna test out the weight. Firstly, the Asus ProArt is about 2.4 kilos. Now the MacBook Pro, 2.1 kilos, about 320 grams lighter. Before we go into the benchmarks, I wanna talk about the screen because as a creator, that is one of the most important thing on a laptop because that's what you're interacting the most. Whatever you're doing, you're looking at the screen, so the screen is gonna have to be good. In terms of size, they're both 16 inches, but the Mac diagonal is actually 16.2 inches. And interestingly, the top corners on the Mac are curved. The bottom corners are actual sharp corners. The resolution is actually higher on Mac as well, as well as the brightness. On Mac, we get 600 nits SDR and 1600 nits XDR or high dynamic range, what Apple calls. On ProArt, we have 500 nits SDR and 550 on HDR. The Windows laptop here does support touchscreen. The Mac doesn't. The Windows also supports a pen and stylus support and it actually comes with Asus stylus or Asus Pen 2.0 that you can use on the screen as well as on the trackpad. The MacBook Pro doesn't support Apple Pen support. Now, in terms of bit depth, the Windows laptop can go up to 10 bits. And what do I mean by that? The 10 bit is only supported when the laptop is plugged in. When the laptop is not plugged in, you're not really gonna get 10 bit out of the display. But the MacBook Pro does support 10 bit without any restrictions. In terms of refresh rate, both of them are 120 Hertz. The Apple screen here can go down to one Hertz, whereas the Windows one is fixed 120 Hertz screen. But that is really good for Apple because by reducing the screen refresh rate, you actually save a ton of battery life and that is absolutely amazing. Apple calls it the pro motion display. So when you're actually interacting with anything, your screen is very, very smooth, but when you're just kind of looking at, I don't know, text or images or photos, it reduces the refresh rate and saves your battery, which is just amazing. In terms of the technology, Apple is using LED backlit LCD panel here, whereas Asus is using an OLED panel. And in terms of user experience, OLED looks much better than what Apple has in here, especially when you're looking at content or something in the dark, the blacks are much blacker on the OLED screen compared to the Apple screen. In terms of the hinges, Apple maxes out about this angle of the screen, whereas the Windows laptop can go all the way down to 180 degrees. So here are both of the webcams. This is Apple webcam and this is the Windows webcam. Both of them are 1080p cameras and you let me know which sounds and looks the best. The Windows laptop also supports face in unlock because it's got an IR sensor there. The Apple doesn't, but the Apple does have a fingerprint unlock there, which we don't have on the Windows laptop. Before we go into the benchmarks, it's very important that I mention the process node that these chips are based on. Apple is using TSMC's three nanometer process, whereas this Windows laptop is using Intel's 10 nanometer process, which means that basically when Intel's one transistor is 10 nanometers, Apple can fit three transistors in that same space, which means that you can use so many more transistors on Apple device, which means less power consumption and more performance. Bear in mind, this Windows laptop is using the best mobile CPU you can get on Windows, which is the Intel i9-13980HX. It's got 24 cores and 32 threads, which is absolutely insane. 
And let's take a look at that performance then. In Cinebench R23 CPU rendering benchmarks, we can see that the ProArt oh, is about 9.3% slower in the single core score and about 5.3% slower in the multi core score. Even though having a lot more cores, 24 cores compared to the 16 cores, 12 performance cores compared to the 8 performance cores, and 4 E cores compared to the 16 E cores, the uh, Windows laptop still loses out. But I'll leave the best news to last. In Geekbench 6, we can see even a bigger difference because it doesn't really utilize multi-threading or threads it only uses cores and that's why we can see ProArt is about 6% slower in the single core scores and about 20% slower in the multi-core scores. Moving on to 3D rendering performance on the CPU. In a moment you'll see the GPU as well. The ProArt laptop here is about 12.5% slower in the monster scene 25% slower in the junk shop scene and almost 27% slower in the classroom scenes. So Apple here gets another big win. Moving on to Photoshop and photo editing. If you're using the Windows laptop, it's not as fast as this Apple M3 Max here. The Windows laptop is about 38 percent slower in the overall scores and up to 47 percent slower in the filter scores and i was using the puget bench benchmark for photoshop and again for photo editing the mac gets another big win moving on to video editing and puget bench for premiere pro we'll see very similar results here we're using premiere pro 24 and puget bench 1.0 benchmark and then pro art is about 15 to 22 percent slower in the standard and extended overall scores the long gop score interestingly is about the same and that's due to intel's igpu on that cpu so if you do use h.264 and 5 codex both of these laptops perform very similarly in encoding and decoding of the footage. When moving on to IntraFrame, you can see that the Apple is so much better. The ProArt is about 44% slower and that's because Apple has very nicely optimized encoders and decoders for ProRes format. ProRes is one of those IntraFrame codecs where each frame is a separate picture rather than H.264 or Long GOP where we have a group of pictures and it's much harder to decode. But now in RAW, seeing the extended and standard RAW score, the Windows laptop actually wins here compared to the Apple and quite a bit. It's 35% faster and that's because the CPU has a lot of cores and if you really utilize all of them playing back Ari Raw or Red Raw or something like that, the Windows laptop does a better job and quite a bit better actually. The GPU score, whether extended or standard, is about 30 to 31% slower on the Pro Art, even though we're using RTX 4070 laptop GPU. But I also wanted to test the exporting of a real world project, not just a single codec, which you saw in this test here. So if you are actually working with a certain codec, a lot more like H.264 or maybe more raw, maybe a bit more intraframe codex, then the previous test is really for you. Pick out the one that you're using the most and that's the most relevant score for you. But now let's say you use different cameras and mix all the codecs together, like B-RAW, H.264 10-bit, H.264 8-bit, and then you're having different frame rates, different speeds of it, you're speeding up and slowing down footage, zooming in, zooming out, layers on top, color grading, more complex thing. How does this work in terms of exporting? Because now we're testing not just the CPU or GPU, but everything of the whole laptop, the CPU, GPU, RAM, how it all works together, as well as the hardware, accelerators. Let's take a look. Firstly, I wanted to test it on battery power. So both of these laptops, exactly the same test, battery power, and we can see, oh my goodness, how fast this M3 Max is. 13 minutes, 49 seconds, compared to 51 minutes and nine seconds on the Pro Art. The M3 Max is almost four times as fast as this Pro Art, but the Pro Art has a trick up its sleeve. When you plug the laptop in, you're actually gonna get more performance. The previous tests all have been te tested on plugged in and the max performance. So when you do plug in the Windows laptop, it actually gives the CPU and GPU a lot more power and goes a lot faster. But how much faster? Well, we're shaving almost half 
the time off. As you can see, the product is now going 32 minutes and 57 seconds instead of 51 minutes. But the Apple also can go a little bit faster. The interesting thing about this M3 Max more than new M3 uh, chips is that if you are using the chips when they're cold, they boost a little bit higher. So when you're doing this test the third, fourth time when the chassis and everything else has been heated up, it's actually going to slow down and that's what the previous result you can see there, 30 minutes, 49 seconds. But let's say you have had the laptop on the table all night in the morning, you're going to plug it in and put the power mode to high power mode and to do the same test again the laptop is actually going to boost a bit higher and a little bit faster and as you can see the m3 max shipped another minute of its already super fast render time and you can see now we're doing it at 12 minutes and 50 seconds so when plugged in the m3 max is still more than two and a half times faster than the Windows laptop here. The Blender and 3D rendering performance. The NVIDIA RTX 4070 with Studio drivers is very well optimized for that and performs very, very well there, as you can see. Monster Scene, about 12.9% faster than M3 Max. The Junk Shop Scene, interestingly, about 6.5% slower, which is very impressive about this 40 core C GPU that we have inside this M3 Max. And Classroom Scene is about 2.2% faster on the Pro Art. Again, bear in mind, these results are plugged in. The only unplugged test I did in this video is the battery power export from Premiere Pro. Moving on to Redshift, the M3 Max supports Redshift rendering performance, and you can see that the Pro Art is actually about 17% slower with the RTX 4070 mobile GPU. Now, that is just extremely impressive about Apple's GPU in there because it uses less power and performs a lot faster. Now, what about battery life? And this is where Apple gets another big, big win. Now, the battery life performance on this 16 inch is absolutely incredible. Like if you have been using Windows laptop, whichever laptop you have been using, no matter how powerful or less powerful, it's another league when we're talking about this here. The ARM architecture really works wonders with this chip. And just an example how good this is, when I was doing the battery life tests on this Pro Art, the Premiere Pro export, I had the battery about 97% when I pressed go on the export. By the time it finished the export, in 51 minutes, I had 12% battery left and the laptop was already on a battery saving mode. That is insane. If I did the same test on this MacBook Pro, I could do it multiple, multiple, multiple times before the battery runs empty. I think I did it maybe five or six times and I still had 25% left or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but it's absolutely insane. So there's no point in me giving you like 10 hours or two hours. If you're using the laptop, the Pro, you can get an hour or two out and then find the charger. With this one, you can work most of the day depending on your workflow, maybe even more and some next day. Also, if you do put the M3 Max on a power saving or low power mode, it lasts even longer and you're not going to lose that much performance. Max Tech did a very good video about that, so feel free to check that out to get even more performance. The Windows laptop you can put on a power saving mode as well, but honestly, the performance is going to be... No a lot, lot slower, and you're still not gonna save that much on battery life. When talking about battery life, we have to look at the max power consumption. When looking at the M3 Max, the on Cinebench, it uses roughly around 60 watts at peak when we're utilizing all of the CPU. Now, when we're looking at the package power of this M3 Max, I'm seeing it roughly max about 70 watts. This Pro Art here, just CPU alone, can pull 150 watts when doing Cinebench. So no wonder the battery drains a lot faster because we're using more than twice, two and a half times more power than the M3 Max. And remember the transistors, it kind of makes sense. So when we're calculating the Cinebench R24 score and points per watts, then we can see that the M3 
3 Max is getting 28.2 points per watt, whereas the Pro Watt is getting 10.7 points per watt, which is almost three times more performance per watt on the Apple compared to this Pro Watt laptop. And as you can see, the transistor race is very, very important. And Apple is one of the only ones who uses the three nanometer process from TSMC. And as you can see, this chip does wonders. Now, if Intel really moved onto a similar process node, I think the performance would be very, very impressive and much more neck to neck. But can Intel ever catch up with Apple? Well, that's where AMD comes in and potentially AMD is the one who actually takes it closer to Apple. So then, in conclusion, which laptop should you be getting? And I don't want you to get me wrong. You might be looking at this review and thinking, oh my goodness, this Pro Art is so rubbish. We shouldn't buy this. And that is absolutely not true. Both of these laptops are absolutely amazing. Bear in mind that this Pro Art is close to half the price as this M3 Max MacBook Pro. And also, this Pro Art is upgradable. You can upgrade the RAM, the SSD, if you wanted to, there's another M.2 slot in there, which for Apple takes the price even higher. If you want to upgrade the RAM, it's going to cost you seven, eight grand and this laptop a lot less. Whereas when you upgrade the RAM and SSD, you're not necessarily getting more performance out of this laptop because the CPU and GPU are exactly the same. So this laptop here has a lot of other features that perhaps you don't need on the Mac and might be worth considering anyways. Another one of those is this ASUS dial here that actually is very nice for creators if you're doing a lot of Photoshop brushing or using creative applications in Adobe, you can map this to do different things and it's a really cool feature. The trackpads are both awesome on both of these laptops. They're using haptic trackpads, which is one of the best that you can get on the market. So if you're asking me which one to buy, then if money is no concern to you, and you're just saying, look, I just woke up in diamonds. Let me know which laptop is the best one to get. Then this M3 Max is absolutely insane. And if you want to know how this compares to some of the Windows, you know, PCs, a desktop size, then go check out that video. And it's absolutely insane. If you're just looking for the laptop, the best bang for buck laptop, then this Pro Art actually gives you a lot more laptop per dollar the the price point for this is absolutely amazing and the build quality is not cheap like other windows laptop it's absolutely insane the screen flex is absolutely non-existent and i would argue the screen panels is and hinges are much better made than apples apple flexes a lot more than this here it's absolutely solid it's insane also, you're gonna get a lot more ports when buying this Pro Art. If you're looking on the left side, the Pro Art has a USB Type A headphone and mic combo jack and an SD card reader. Bear in mind, this SD card reader goes up to 100 megabytes per second. On Mac, we can see the MagSafe charging cable and two Thunderbolt 4 ports, as well as the Mac and headphone combo jack. Bear in mind, if you're using high impedance headphones, then this headphone jack supports that and gives more power to them as well. When we're looking at the back side of the laptops, we're not going to get any ports on the Apple, but we're going to get some ports on the Pro Art. HDMI, DC power in, and an RJ45 LAN port, which is one gigabits in speed. On the right side of the laptop, we have a Kensington lock on the Pro Art, USB Type A, and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. On Apple, we have an SD card reader, which is actually very, very fast, 300 plus megabytes per second if you have one of those faster V90 cards, another Thunderbolt 4 port and an HDMI port. And that's it. If you want to check out these laptops, I'm going to leave them linked in the description below. Bye-bye.